Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, how exciting to see you again. It's been so long. Last time I saw you, um, it was just before you were going to Japan. And that was like a long time ago. That's right. Yes, you're right. My word, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. You look wonderful. So do you. You've not changed a bit. You look younger every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm 100 pounds thinner. I can see that. you've done Yeah, that. yeah. Look at, look, at, look at this. I mean, I'm just wow. trim and sexy. And the whole bit. <laughs> I, I, I did it through, um, I did it through juicing. Ah, okay. You know, cold pressed juice. Right, cool. So um, if, you, if you ever have a reason or desire to either get healthy I do. or, um, or want to lose a little bit of weight, or maybe you're starting to feel a little sick, you want to fix it, just cold pressed juicing. And uh, it's remarkable. Uh, hey, you look fantastic. You, I'm you trying know, to turn that lamp on behind me there, but I can't find. No, it. no, that that okay. It frames it. It frames it pretty good. I think you made a great adjustment right there. Is this okay here? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. You could even go like that if you want to, if you get comfortable. <laughs> but yeah, but. Um... <laughs> well, let's go back that way a little bit. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks, you look really, you, 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 and you look so pretty. You look really great. You've been. Oh, well, I'll tell you, I've just, what a trip I had last night, honest to God. <laughs> tell us about it. Well, basically, long story short, I um, arrived into, from London Heathrow into Frankfurt, and I knew that I, I was cutting it fine because we had a delay sitting on the aeroplane. And uh, sure enough, I run to the gate. Of course, there's no. I've missed the gate, I've missed the uh, flight, the gate's closed. Uh, check into a hotel and- um, Hold on a moment, your, your, your internet froze you when you said somebody spoke rudely to you and then you froze. Pick it up, what did you say? They spoke rudely to you. Just rude, rude to me where to go. I just asked him to help me where to go to rebook another flight. And uh, like I say, it was quite rude in um, the way he spoke to me, but hey ho. Um, but yeah, we're in Germany, so you know. Um, so anyway, I eventually, 200 people later, stood in a line for around an hour and a half. Eventually, got my ticket rescheduled for today, and I had to stay in a hotel, 30 minute taxi ride to the hotel, no food. When I got there, no food in the airport. And then I got here eventually this afternoon, and uh, yeah. Wow, but, that's hard traveling. I know. It Listen, I'm used to it, but I'm getting older. <laughs> <laughs> you're not showing it that's for sure you look every bit of, you look every bit of 28 and you just keep it that way <laughs> um do you remember tom simpson uh tom simpson was um a really terrific professional pool instructor uh he started the uh, billiard academy um his logo would be uh he'd He'd hold a big giant like a like an old caveman club, a, you know, just a big club. He'd put it on his shoulder and his headline would say, beat people with a stick. Right. OK. OK. <laughs> you, you picture that? Well, yeah. <clears throat> while I was listening to you, you just gave me an idea. So in the future, going forward, you have my permission. If anybody ever talks rudely to you. Here's what I want you to say. I'm not beating him with a stick. No, no. I, 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 want, I, I want you to tell them this. You could say, you could look at them and say, you know, you spoke very rudely to me. And I could beat you with a stick because I'm a professional world champion pool player. <laughs> and then smile delightfully. And, and then this way you got your point across in a very delicate way. I'll remember that next time. That's yeah, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I'll remember next time. Yeah, because because you'll catch him off guard. You'll say, "I could beat you with a stick," because I'm a professional world champion ah, pool player. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 you know what? This will diffuse that bitterness. But do you know? So many people. You have to know this. So many people can go a whole day, even whole days and nothing makes them laugh oh, nothing know. has made them smile nobody has paid them a compliment 
They could have some bitterness going on at home or something that is just, they're dealing with it. Yeah, you never know, right? And you could be the very thing that turns that around with something just like that. (laughs) We'll try. I'll let you know how it goes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just to make sure you don't have a handcuff. Uh, sorry, what you if I listen to you, I probably will have. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was arrested for threatening to beat him with a stick. Yeah, yeah. And they wouldn't let me finish. <laughs> it's so wonderful. So, so tell us a little bit about um, what you're doing there now. What's going to be happening? Let me ask a quick question because I've got to be off by around seven fifty. We're going to be we're going to be well done with no problem. Um, as, as, and as a matter of fact, without you even oh, really her thinking, time is different than ours, Dominic. Um, yeah, but but fifty is fifty. Right okay. now, I have one thirteen, and okay. and so that means that we we're plenty on time. I promise. Okay. Cool. And, and the best news about it is that I told Kat, because of your time crunching, just start the camera and she could trim and edit as we go. Perfect. And, cool. and, and so we, we're going to keep you right on time. Um, we're going to take, there will be a point where we take a small commercial break. Okay. So Kat uh, could pay for the cat food. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and it's going to be great. So tell us about what's happening there, what you're going to be um, engaging in and how it's going to be platformed. Well, I'm actually here playing in the Predator German Open 10 ball championships. We have a male um, German Open championships and we have a female one. So it's the 10 ball where it's uh, two races to four, two sets. And if a player goes wins 4-1 and then the next player wins 4-3 um, then it's it's obviously a draw and then you do a shootout the shootout is 10 ball not actually on the spot it's actually where the 10 ball would set, sit spot kind of thing and the cue ball has to be behind the line within the first diamond across two diamonds down to the bolt line to the head string so you can choose anywhere in that realm. Um, you have four tries each. And um, if it's tied at that point, after four tries each, then it goes to sudden death, where basically you're going up to one diamond, one diamond corner pocket area, shooting that same 10 ball. Um, and whoever misses after each player's had equal opp- shots, if you like, opportunity shots, then whoever misses first sudden death is is a loser. So it's really dramatic. It's really <laughs> exciting. The best way when players complain about it, because it is tough action, to be honest, but I say to all of them, think about it as a race to eight. Win the two sets. Get to eight first. You know, win the two sets. Um, and then you don't have to worry about the shootout. But, you know, many professional sports, and, of course, pool being a professional sport, Many of them have gone to the shootout to finally resolve, uh, the, the, or as, as best as possible, dispelling the tie issue. And, you know, football has gone to overtimes. Right. Hockey has shootouts. Soccer has shootouts. Um, it's, it's not an unusual idea to think no, that exactly. uh, we've played the match. And the bottom line is we have both demonstrated our capacity to be excellent shooters. We just need to end this thing and we're going to end it by, you know, it's, it could, it's a beautiful idea actually. So you feel good about it? I do. I mean, it's brutal. Don't get me wrong. You know, a lot of players are wishing that like when we used to play the tournament of champions, that the sudden death was actually one more rack as opposed to this 10 ball shootout. But I like it. I mean, yeah, when you lose, I suppose that, you know, you feel like you've you've not had, you know, it's not a a full rack or you've only had a few shots, one mistake. But at the end of the day, it's equal opportunity, no matter what way you look at it. Yeah. Um, It's equal opportunity. The best thing about the 10 ball shootout is it's true equal opportunity. It's like the penalty shootout. When you, if you played one rack, 
it would be whoever won the lag for that rack got the major advantage by having the break. So it eliminates that. It keeps it actually true equal opportunity because you've got equal shots with the exact same shot. So I like it. Uh, I think it's great, a great thing for our sport in giving the chance giving our sport the chance to get some outside industry sponsorship through excitement of viewers because it's just not we've tried races to nine races to seven races to 11 nine ball one ball on the spot nine ball on the spot winner break alternate break 10 ball <laughs> you know we've tried everything in, in in pool and yeah we're doing great now since lockdown but we've not took it up to that next level yet and i think this potentially could be the way forward because the exact the room stops from players too. So even these players that don't like it, they still stop to watch a shootout when it's against two top players or against any players. They still stop to watch. Yeah, it. yeah. If that's creating that kind of excitement between the players. Then you can only imagine the excitement it's creating for the viewers. Yeah, and the ex the 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 height the heightened. Uh, the heightened exhilaration of of the you know the the adrenaline the, it just squeezes it. It, it it does because it's like oh my gosh it's come down to this yeah yeah I mean if this creates you know x amount of new viewers all it takes is for one or two of them to be really keen on what we're doing and be an outside industry sponsor that takes us to the next level takes it to the mainstream TV takes it to that next step. Um, again, if we've got that viewership of, of, of eyes watching, that's a great leverage to go to sponsors and say, look, this is how many thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are watching. Um, you know, we're looking to get instead of- Sure. And, and with Karim and Ozzy putting together Billiard TV, which many pool players are not aware of that. Uh, right. since, since I've been, since I've been um, sort of taking over to do these interviews for Sneaky Pete and, and to bring more to the forefront in helping the players to get uh, a, re, you know, a, a, a good awareness, uh, Billiard TV, uh, it's on a, a few different networks. Uh, if nobody knows, uh, uh, Zumo. Uh, which if you go to, if you're on Roku, you could just download the channel X-U-M-O, I believe it. And then I think they've got like two separate channels running called Billiard TV. That's right. And, uh, you know, you could see they haven't even begun filling the sponsor spots because they're just using the image with a few pool tables down the lane and a time clock. And there's sometimes it's one minute, sometimes it's two minute time clock. You just watch the clock count down and you realize, well, they have to sell these time slots and they're going to. And so we're seeing the birth of, you know, we're seeing the birth of this baby trying to learn to stand on its feet and crawl and fall. And eventually it's going to take, it's taking these first steps, Yeah, I mean, which is so, a beautiful thing. Like I say, you know, when I was younger, you know, you think about the format and how it works for you as a player. You think about, do I like winner break? Do I like alternate break? Do I like three point rule? Do I, you know, you think about that because it's your living, it's your livelihood and you want to know what to work on to give yourself the best chance. And if you don't like something, you voice that, you know, as a player. But as you get older, and I'm not using the age card here, but as you get older, it's, you turn a little bit to more about the future <clears throat> of sport and, you know, about the future of our, industry and and you know the longevity of it and how we can grow it as opposed to just thinking about yourself and right now um, i'm thinking about my future when i retire you know i want to still be involved with pool and if it's growing then then that gives me a better future too of, of course we all think about ourselves within that but um yeah most certainly you know i think this could be um you know i think along with matchroom doing the nine ball tour predator doing the ten ball and this new format with a shootout that is, in my opinion, yes. um, a, you know, a new thing that would create potential new excitement and new um, viewers, if you like. I think together, them two major icons of our game, you know, industry um, influencers and yes. what they're doing is a fantastic job to really promote our sport. And I think hopefully 
between them and the players if everybody really supports it and you guys of course that do work very hard well we are we are, we are and you're right kelly and and i compliment you and applaud you so much for thinking about this mindset of the legacy because until we've become more matured and seasoned in crafting the level the skill see that's the nicer way of saying instead of getting older um <laughs> <laughs> As okay, I've become, it still, I've, it still results in the same. But, yeah, I've got yeah. <laughs> uh, but as a result of that, we begin to think. We begin to think. Um, you you realize that you're beginning to think a little differently. Mm -hmm. See, as our age becomes more, you know, enhanced, uh, we start thinking of things we never used to think about before. And, uh, you know, many years ago, I had to make a decision only because I'm a, you, you know, you've, we've, we've been together on a coaching, you know, relationship, you've seen me performing, and I've had to, I've had to make a very clear distinction between allowing competition to interfere with instruction and coaching, because it's very difficult to to focus your mind on your competition, and yet you have these students, they're going around in your head. You can't get away from it. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's kind of like if, 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 you were, uh, if your job was to be in the sanitation business and you threw the garbage in the back of the truck all day long, whether you like it or not, you're going to begin to smell like garbage. And you could, you could shower all you want, but at night when you go to sleep, you're going to smell garbage yeah, yeah, of course. because it gets into your skin. It gets into you. Yeah. And so this is why Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, all of these world, world champions and other sports, they don't give lessons because it's too important for them to stay focused on their competition yeah, yeah, sure. and look at what have you have been rewarded so beautifully with your achievements. I mean, we could spend the rest of the hour just listing what you've done and never get around to talking to Kelly Fisher because <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, of course, of course. And I appreciate that. I love your I love your idea of seeing okay. the future legacy. Can I just can I just pause one second? Sure go. Brittany Bryant's just arrived after a long flight from Canada and she's not at the door. Give me two seconds. I'll just oh, like, oh, oh, okay. okay. Right, right. Don't yeah. turn the camera because <laughs> she might say something we shouldn't hear. No, uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm back. Good. Uh, Kelly, we're going to take a quick sound bite. Just don't move, okay? okay. And we're going to take a quick break for uh, a couple of commercials, and then we will be right back with Kelly Fisher. So hang on, everybody, and don't change the channel. Um, Kelly, I just love to see your smile and your laugh. And uh, you've, you've, you know, you've, you've always been at the top of one of my female fan likes. And uh, I've, I've just enjoyed from the background. I don't make a lot of noise with you, but I, I, I just have loved seeing the blossoming. Let's, uh, let's kind of get back on track with what we were talking about. Um, let's talk a little bit about your idea and vision of 
what will become a legacy? How do you begin to, these are brand new thoughts for you. How do you begin thinking of the legacy of Kelly Fisher in the future, contributing back to pool and, and, and allowing your history to, to play its role, but your, your pre, then that, that present future day activity, what, what would you like to see that really looking like? I mean, you know, there's a various things I'd love to get involved in once I finish playing. At the moment, you know, I'm trying to think, obviously I'm focusing on still playing. And, you know, the moment that I feel that I can, go, any competition I go into, that I don't feel that I'm capable to win or even do well in, you know, once I get that feeling, then I think, it, you know, players, it, it's time to kind of to quit then for me. Um, and it's not about winning or losing. It's just about feeling that you're going into a competition with confidence and comfortableness. Um, I, I always give it my best regardless of the result. But, you know, at that moment when I do retire, but, you know, saying that makes me smile because I just feel like I'll be still playing with uh, a walking stick. You know, I just... However... I'm looking, I love and I really enjoy um, doing commentary and the TV work that I've been very fortunate enough to already have dipped my toe in the water with uh, Sky, Sky Sports and um, Design and the various um, channels that Matchroom um, you know, supply to. Oh, speaking um, of commentary, Mark White said to tell you hello. Oh, did he? Oh, bless yes. him. I love him. Oh. Oh, of course, <laughs> back. We do okay. actually message, so he's a, right. a diamond, so he is. But yeah, I do enjoy the commentary. I do enjoy the TV work, um, you know, doing the chatting about the players, chatting about the matches, things like that. Um, and I've really enjoyed that when I did the Moscone Cup. It was absolutely, honestly, really, really a memorable experience and something that I would like to do more of. And I was fortunate enough to do a little bit more of at the World Pool Championships, etc. So that would be kind of one line I'd, I'd enjoy to, you know, continue working and growing uh, in. And then I love teaching, to be honest. I, I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm envisioning, you know, the Kelly Fisher Academy of Pool, you know, the, the it's got to become, it's got to become a time where you really get to let that part of you come out because you are, you really are a great teacher. And thank you. I do, I do quite a bit now. Um, well, I say quite a bit with COVID, obviously pre COVID uh, for many years now, I've been going over to Hong Kong. Um, again, very fortunate, just fell into my lap. If you like um, going over to Hong Kong and training and teaching, helping with the uh, Hong Kong national team. Mm -hmm. And then, COVID hit, I was going two or three times a year, three weeks at a time, and really enjoyed that. And then COVID hit, obviously, and they're still quite strict and under a lot of restrictions over there. So, uh, they've sent some of their players actually here um, uh, that I'm kind of, you know, taking under my wing a little bit. And um, they're actually, we've got two guys playing here and a, and a female player. Um, so I'll be meeting meeting up with them today. I've already met them, but I'll be you know gathering up with them and practicing later and stuff like that. Um, but I had the a great experience these last few weeks. I've had Loho Sum. Now, for those who don't know of him, is a he's not new to me. I've I've been training with him since he was 16 years old when I visited Hong Kong, teaching and training. But I knew he was a great player then. Him and Robbie Capito are both partnering for the World Cup of Pool this week and I'm mm -hmm. disappointed I can't be with them but I'm here uh, with the others so <laughs> but um, no I've been with him for the last over a month I went with him to Gibraltar for the World Pool Masters and out the blue nobody expected a result that he had getting to the final including uh -huh. myself uh, I knew he was good enough but I didn't think he was ready enough um, he's not experienced uh, and he just come out and he had some tough battles. He had some great matches, some terrible matches. They, he just, um, you know, dug in there and got through. And he got all the way to the final. And even against Joshua Filler in the final, he did lose, but he put up a great fight. He was ahead. So he's a player to watch. He went on to the UK Open. I went with him. I played in the event as well as um, supporting and being with him. And he got to the uh, last 16 of that out of 256 players. He did great. You know, he's doing great. It's his time. 
and I'm just uh, very, uh, you know, honoured and uh, to be a part of, of, of that too. So I enjoy that side of it. And this has confirmed it is what I'm getting at. And I think that would be something I'd pursue more of. Okay, that. that's exciting because people can look forward to that and 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 realize that there is a future uh, coming to that. And of course, with today's look at what we're doing, you're you know halfway around the world, and here we are just having a conversation together because right. technology has created so much more you know permission for communicating that we've never had before well thank god for it during covid because i think without that you know the, the likes of yeah. you guys i did interviews with sneaky peak mafia i did interviews with and i can name many um you know we've got ride the nine tour and we've got yeah Q you know I, I, exactly and re, and i was doing you know i do the tuesday night clinic at eight o'clock i'd been doing for several years but during covid I added a daytime event every every day at eleven o'clock. Call it the lunch brunch boot camp, and so from Monday through Friday at eleven o'clock in the morning, you can and lunch brunch boot camp and 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 be able to provide something. That's right, and it to accommodate out. and help people. That's right. I think it kept our sport alive, really, because yeah. you know pre pre COVID, as a whole, the sport wasn't really looking that great. You know, we've seen the highs of seen the lows and I must say that it would kind of you know tournament wise the amount of tournaments especially for the women's game and even for the men's game you know the men's game certainly was in a better position than the women's at that point but st it was still just coming down a little bit the women's was getting in a bit of a slump to be honest yeah. you've heard the term uh you've heard the term how mother is the uh uh or uh, or uh, what do you call that is uh, uh necessity is the mother of invention well, with with COVID, uh, crisis stimulates the creativity yes. of of, of you know improvise, modify, redeliver, mm -hmm. and the end result of it is we've we've expanded. That's what I mean. I mean, I was really concerned that first few months, and then I was doing everything. Uh, I played in every single online challenge tour, <laughs> uh, whether it be. Every Every interview, every challenge event, every tournament online, doing the ghost, um, you know, and I really enjoyed it. I quite enjoyed actually the tranquility of just playing in my my practice room and and being able to be at no travel, if you like. And I did miss it. Don't get me wrong, but it, I enjoyed getting in the routine of um, working out and and not having that when you travel. It's very difficult to maintain. Mm. Uh, anyway, the Thanks to you, the likes of you guys, it kept a, our sport out there. It provided a service for people that wanted to watch it. It provided a service for us players to still play it and to still keep that practice, that drive. That so let's um, <clears throat> let's get a chance to kind of peel back the curtain a little bit and and take a few minutes and talk about now that you've readapted yourself and you've 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 come through tell us i'm going to ask you a couple of firing questions and just because i know a lot of players want to hear some of the inside behind the scene tell us tell us about your workout schedule how do you keep fit what are you doing that keeps you uh you know what are you doing to keep yourself um you know in great condition as an athlete is that before or now? Now. <laughs> Things change. It's a bit of a yo-yo, uh, to be honest. <laughs> hey, listen, sometimes, I, sometimes I sit here just like this, and I just exercise because I've got nothing better to do. I might as well use the time, right? <laughs> yeah. no, you've seen me. I, I, I have fluctuated over the years. Um, <laughs> no, in COVID, during COVID, every morning I would, would do a long walk. I would um, do yoga. And then in the evening, I would again go another walk with my dog and maybe go a bike ride. And I also were doing Joe Wicks workout. That right. was COVID. And I got into a fantastic routine. I stopped drinking any alcohol for months and um, really got into a very good routine. As we come out of COVID, um, I've still stopped drinking. I have, I say stopped, I have here and there, don't get me wrong. And um, since coming out of COVID, I still try and do the yoga the Joe Wicks, I'm getting 
I'm not using that old card again because I'm not going to say it, but it will kill my knees. As I'm maturing. As I'm maturing. As I'm maturing, my <laughs> knees were hurting doing the Joe Wicks. So I had to knock that on the head. And, um, you know, I, I tried to maintain the walking and doing the yoga. When traveling, the eating, you know, obviously I changed my eating habits alongside that and got into a really good routine of being able to pre prepare my meals, yeah. which is half the battle. Yeah. Traveling, yeah. it's impossible. It really is. And uh, I gained about, I'm sorry, I lost around. 30, 30 pounds yeah it's it, it it really shows you've you've just yeah, well, I've yeah. gained about 15 of that back to be honest with you. So <laughs> okay I'm halfway again however here we are and you know I'll uh, get another kick to uh, probably um, knuckle down again real okay soon. tell us about your practicing schedule what are you trying to do to maintain a, um, a, a not just not just, uh, I mean, specifically when you want to do some training or begin becoming focused on something very deliberate, how much time are you getting to actually do that uh, in, 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 in relate and in not meaning, well, I put my stick together and I'm playing, but you're actually the same way you would set out to take a walk or to take a workout. I'm going to set out to do some training or to do some work. Tell us a little bit about how much of that are you getting in now? Well, that's what I'm like, you know, I, I set my day out and I, I, I do. When I go into the practice room, again, I've been playing for 30 years. It's very difficult to keep motivated. It's very difficult to keep wanting to go into that isolated practice room um, and just train on the same things. Or even if you try and create new things, it's still putting balls or getting shape. Something that I've been doing, whether it was snooker or pool for 30 years now. So I challenge myself. Um, I'm always... I keep a log of my drills or ghost or match play, whichever, to see, you know, if I'm improving, what I'm not improving on, what, you know, and try and always try and strive to do better. Uh, that's something that keeps me motivated. I've done that for years. And, and without, and, and this is where a lot, you know, most, a lot of players, I hate practice. They whine and complain. And you said, I think you said the single most critical part of it is, if you don't keep a journal, if you don't keep a record, without keeping the stats, nobody would even care about any sports. That's right. Without the record of comparative of performance. So if you are, and this is a big encouragement to other players, if you would just keep a journal of what are you doing and how well are you doing it, and then over time be able to go back and compare that. Um, you know, I promote that all the time. If you could do a drill 10 times, uh, okay, can you do it four out of 10? Can you do it seven out of 10? This is the, the edge. Well, the thing is, I've still got, even I brought it all the way. I moved back to the UK um, eight years ago now. Wow. And I've, I was doing this be before that. So I was doing it in America when I lived in North Carolina. And I brought the binder that's that thick of oh my. All, my, all my practice um, <laughs> records, if you like, over with me. So you can imagine the amount of, so sometimes I go back and I think, have I improved now? I look back how I did at the ghost, how I did at this drill, whatever. And, uh, you know, just to keep an eye on and, oh yeah, I've improved. I've improved since then or whatever. I think it's great um, for your everyday practice, but it's also good to, to be able to look back and see where you've improved and, and what areas and also to see where you need to improve. So for me, anybody I teach, I recommend that and anybody out there listening, who's uh, getting into the game or getting fed up of the game or wanting to step up to the next level of a game, I would suggest that that would be a, something that would give you an incentive to improve yeah, yeah. You along your way. And that's the music to my ears because, <laughs> you know, my name is the drill instructor. So, you know, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's my, you know, that's my passion is to get, get people to that level. So Kelly, um, so first and foremost, we just to get this precious time with you and be able to just find this opportunity for everybody else to get into your space and get into hearing what you have to say um, with the few minutes that we have left. And because, you know, I'm keeping us on a quite uh, a, I'm watching the clock here to be on your time restriction as well. Um, I'm going to ask you to take 
take whatever moments it takes. I don't want to even call it minutes, but whatever minutes or moments um, to look into the camera and and um, let us just hear a bit about um, your heart. Let's just let's let's just hear something that's just really um, really from you to us as the pool players to the pool playing world and. Let us just really enjoy taking a moment to just hear um, some of your encouraging or inspiring words that could mean so much to so many. Well, I mean, okay. I, th I mean, if I want to, you know, look back on myself, I think, you know, I've, I was very blessed um, from the beginning to have the support from my family and my parents. Um, they really did help me and supported me in everything that I did, especially, and, you know, all the way until they passed away, they supported me um, and did as much as they could for me. So I think for anybody out there, you know, whether it's your parents, whether it's any member of family, friends, partners, I think, you know, that support is something that we all need. And, um, you know, I think that's something that would really um, be essential for any aspiring player to just, you know, just hang on to that and appreciate that support. If anybody's helping you with anything, you know, don't take it for granted, appreciate that and uh, use it the best you can to fulfill what your dreams are. It's something that I, you know, always dreamed of, whether it be winning this or achieving this. And, you know, my, my parents were saying, if you do, you're great. And if you don't, it's okay too. And that's something that's very important that you don't put too much pressure. You've got to understand that, you know, dreams are big and you mm -hmm. might not always get that dream, but it doesn't mean that you've failed. It's all in how much you try. And if you give it your all, then you've succeeded. That is, that is a beautiful word. If you've, if, if you try to measure achieving some level you put up there and then only determine I succeeded or I'm a failure because I didn't reach that. But whatever the level of it you reached and you know you gave it your all. That's right. It's all in the that, that's your best. It's all in the journey. That's right. Oh mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that's a great that's that's the the journey of the role. And um, I actually don't know where that come from. That just come right off the cuff. And I'm not <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, 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 I don't know where that comes from. I'll tell you where that came from. <laughs> I, I will be glad to tell you where that came from. Our dearest, our dearest brother in this business, Dr. Q, Tom Rossman, always speaks about the joy of the journey, racking up, racking up racking up a victory in your life and the game and always enjoy the journey of the role. And Tom talks about this repeatedly in his rack room program where people can just go and have encouragement in their mind, body, the journey of the game and bring it back to that childhood joy of seeing the colors and hearing the clicking of the balls and falling in love with that. Kelly, you are easy to fall in love with. <laughs> you too, Dominic, of course. It's been a long time. It's been great to see you. And lovely to meet you, Kat, too. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's 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 great that um, it's great that we could share this with everyone. And so everyone from Sneaky Pete Mafia, from Kat and myself, Dominic Esposito, the drill instructor, so special thanks to our dearest friend and such an amazing queen and ambassador to the industry of sports and pool in the billiard world. Uh, thank you to Kelly Fisher, world champion, Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame great. Um, Kelly, we love you and we thank you so much. <laughs> thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you again next time and everybody out there. And hopefully it won't be so long. To you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bless you.